after we Harold and I went on down to my brother's well, we stayed in Salt Lake that night, and I don't know where Daddy and Virgie went, but Virgie had written a letter to somebody, and she wanted to go to a post office, but her and Daddy went. The kids had snuck up to their car and put just married on the back of Daddy and Virgie's car, and uh, they went to the post office, but before they went to the post office, they went through a drive through and had the car washed, but while they were getting the letter in the mail or at the post office. The kids snuck up behind the car and wrote, just married again, back on the car. <laughs> Daddy came out and thought, didn't that car wash wash us off good? <laughs> but the kids were gone. So anyway, all my brother and sisters had done that. And anyway, we went on down to Provo the next day where my oldest brother lived. and. Uh, he had two children, and we took the little girl and went for a walk. And when we come back to the house, Blaine was saying, oh, we love these kids. And, Bar and Harold said, well, we're going to have one as soon as we can. And I thought, really? <laughs> and, but Cheryl was born in April of the next year. And so anyway, we loved her, but she was our first child and, and got whooping cough when she was a month old, so we got broke in as parents very early. She would get coughing so hard and start to swallow her tongue and we'd have to put our finger in and hold her tongue down and and we took her into the doctor and he'd say, oh, she just got a cold. And, and then I said, there's more than this, so we took her to another doctor and. He said, Harold, you hold your hat on when you go down and get this prescription. And and he came back with it, and it had been $25 for that prescription, and they gave her the shot, but she was too far along with it. And so she's had some problems, coughed really hard all her life from that experience, but we thought we we wanted to have our children two years apart, and it got three years, and we thought maybe we'd never be able to have any more. And anyway, then we got went to a doctor, and he said, "You just go home and forget about it and relax." And and our other daughter came along, and my father-in-law came in, and he said, "Well, you're a twin, aren't you?" And I said, "Yes." He said, well, you'll never have a son then because your twin sister will have the boys and you'll have the girls. And I said, that's, no, I said, we'll have a boy. And he says, how, how come you know that? And I said, because it tells me in my patriarchal blessing that I'll have sons and daughters. And he said, oh, that isn't the way it works with the crops, you know. And I thought, what's that got to do with the crops? But. Anyway, then then we had a son, Blair, and so we have we have seven children, uh, four boys and three girls, and uh, feel so blessed to have them. And uh, they they have all stayed active in the church and had many callings. And my one son. When he went to college, his he was about the youngest one in his senior class, so a lot of his buddies went to college, and then they went on their mission, and he was too young, and so he came home, and he worked on the the church granaries out here south of Burley and uh, to build them all one winter, and it was so cold. And, and then when spring came, he went and got everything, sent his papers in and everything, and went to the doctors and went to Salt Lake and bought his suits and stuff. And and a letter came in the mail, and Harold said, well, what do you think this is for? It's to Dale. And I said, and it's from church headquarters? <sighs> he had gone and put his papers in and gone up to go on a mission and hadn't told us a thing and went and bought his suits and books and everything that he needed. And so then 
we, he went on his mission.